Hi, I'm JD, and in this video I'm going to show you two examples of integration by parts, and both of them we're going to be using the table. So if you would, pause the video and see if you can try to do these on your own. All right, the table is very simple. First, you make a table. And with the table, it's going to have basically three columns. One's for the sign, one's for the derivative, and one's for the integral. So first you want to set up your table. Might have saved more video time if I made the table beforehand. So you can remember that for future reference. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the derivative here and the integral here. Now on the side, the sign changes. So plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. And it's going to keep on doing that. Now with this problem, first you write both of them here. Now pretty much you can do this in your head, right? What's the derivative of x? 1, what's the derivative of 1? 0, and it continues being 0. Now what's the derivative of e to the 2, or sorry, the inside derivative of e to the 2x? Yes, it's going to be 1 half e to the 2x. What's the antiderivative of that? 1 fourth e to the 2x, right? Because whenever you integrate it, you need the derivative of this. So you need to put the 2 in here. The way that you balance out the 2 is you multiply by 1 half. 2 times 1 half is 1. So that's going to keep on going like that. Right? And then just do the diagonals. Now once you get to 0, like that you can stop. You don't need to go on. Because that's not going to be there. So then you have, and it's the plus sign, because that's what's here, right? So it's plus x times this. So it would be 1 half x e to the 2x and then it's minus so it's a minus 1 times this so it's a minus 1 fourth e to the 2x and then plus c because it's a indefinite integral now you do the same thing with this one for this one I'm just going to go like this, just for sake of time, because setting up the <laughs> that was too long. All right, I'm going to take the derivative in this column and the antiderivative in that column. I have the sign, so it always starts with plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, etc. Now this goes in here, so that's that, and that's this. Remember the antiderivative of sine, it's not positive cosine, but it's a negative. Negative cosine. This, you just seek, keep on taking the derivative. So x cubed is 3x squared, right? You move the you take the number, move it in front, subtract it by one, then you have uh, 6 because it's 3 times 2, which is 6x. And you have 6 and then 0, and then you can stop at 0. Now, you got to notice the pattern. This is cosine x. When you take the antiderivative of cosine x, that's just a positive sign. So you have that negative there, so that's negative sine x you keep going. Negative sine x will make it a cosine x, right? 
positive because the derivative of sine, sorry, the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. And so negative times a negative, which will give me a positive. You keep going. You get the antiderivative of cosine x is sine x. Now, you can keep on going here. You're going to get a negative cosine x. But like over here, because of the zero, that's not going to show up. Right? And then it's just the diagonals. All of them. So for this one, let me erase this so I can put the whole thing. And it's going to be huge. But you can see the usefulness in this table method. It's very quick. It's very easy. This is a positive, so it's a positive x cubed times this, which gives you a negative x cubed cosine x. Then you have a minus here, a minus 3x squared times this, which is going to give you a plus. Let me erase this so there's no confusion. Which will give you a plus, uh, where was I? Uh, this 3x squared sine x, right? And then this plus 6x cosine x, and then this minus 6 sine x plus c. That's it. So that's using the table method and it's really straightforward.